Okay, welcome back everyone. If it's your first time here, my name is Charlie Solis. This is my 10 inch Tesla turbine. Um, today I'm gonna to be doing a power test of how long we can power a 1200 watt load, which will be these light bulbs from Home Depot. These worksite lights each are 600 watts. They're standard off the shelf. Um, we are going to be working with 150 PSI and 170 gallon tank. Dumping that into the turbine, I don't have my compressor running to refill it, so it'll just be what this tank can supply for as long as it can supply. I've got my throttle over here. I know there's a bunch of these tubes going on through here. It seems complicated. This is just a thermal addition plate heat exchanger setup that's going to be propane heated just to simulate adding heat to the compressed air before it goes into the turbine so we can do tests on how the increase in the temperature increases the efficiency of the turbine specifically by increasing the temperature of the working fluid it'll increase the viscosity of it um, most people don't realize that gases actually have the opposite trend of viscosity as liquids usually do, whereas liquids as they get hot, they get more runny and drippy and thick as they get cold, where gases do the opposite. They get thick as they get hot and then they get runny or when they're cold. The RPM of the motor will be 611 times this voltage reading on the reader. Um, it'll be about somewhere between 10 and 11 it's the single phase voltage of the three phase generators that are being rectified with a three phase DC rectifier being put into a 4,000 watt continuous 8,000 watt peak inverter. Um, the voltage coming out of the rectifier will be 1.7 times the voltage of this single lead. Um, and that has to do with rectification and how it jumps it up and it slightly pulses it at a higher than each individual lead. Um, let me kind of just show you guys around. With You can see the turbine has just the three phase coming off going into the DC rectifier. These DC rectifiers are then going into the inverter. Each generator the one on each side is being put in um uh parallel so the currents will add the voltages will be equal um take a look inside the we can take a look inside these lights the standard 600 watt halogen bulbs harbor Freight hdx brand um all of my tanks are outside. These are the pipes that are coming in for them. I have this, I have this manifold here so that I can add my other auxiliary tanks that are over here. I've got a 30 gallon in the back, two more 20 gallons here, another 10 gallon down there and two 17 gallons in my shed that I will eventually put together so we can do a full 350-ish gallon test. Um, I think without further ado, I'm going to pull the trigger. Make sure you guys are lined up. Sorry for the bad cameras and bashing around the tripod on everything, getting around here. Sorry for the mess as well. Let's um, let's do this.
powered it. It's still up in the RPM range to power it. Give it a second to spin down. I don't have a brake. Probably something I should do not have. Even just a resistor brake. These aren't even hot. Nice. I'm getting a lot of gear losses in this system. If you, what you're hearing is 90% of those gears. Um, unfortunately, I'm working on the axial flux on the axle direct shaft version that won't have these kind of losses as well I have the electric dynamo machine of Tesla's that I am working on that's coming up soon I'm still just trying to get these going I don't know what that flop noise is that's not what I want to hear uh, yeah the gear's a little offset I wasn't I'm not sure exactly how long that went I think it was something like 30 to 40 seconds I will check on the camera here. Um, I'll, now I'll put all the stats that I can also with the spin up, how much energy it took to get that spin up to the RPM where you're at based off the output voltage. Oh, and before I go, we can see just how much of the tank we actually used for the tanks. Um, what is that at? It is at just over 60 PSI. And just for posterity, I'll um, walk you guys out to the compressors so no one cries foul on what I'm doing here. I've got two, that's a 60 and that's an 80 gallon over there. And then this is my 30 gallon compressor. As I said, they're turned off for the test or it was turned off for the test. These are the lines coming in. I have the compressor set. It goes to 180, but the um, other tanks in the system can only do 150. So I have the big tank coming into here and then being regulated into the big tanks. I have the big compressor regulated coming in through here and then going into the um, big tanks. And then from the big tanks, they come back in to this manifold over here. But cool. Um, trying to think if there's any other last thing. Anyone want to make sure I don't have any secret? Sorry for these camera angles, everyone. I'll try to fast forward through it. I make sure I don't have any secret electrical wires anywhere to this inverter. No one can cry foul. Show you underneath. Nothing there. Nothing under here. Nothing under this side. The turbine can lift up off the table. These guys, these are the leads that go there. Uh, clearly one fell off just now. This, this line just goes over to there between these two plate heat exchangers. And I'll, make, I'll even show you the temperature of this. It is pretty cold. <laughs> It doesn't seem right. I think it's actually warmer than that. I'm pretty sure it's something like 60 degrees in here right now. Hope you guys like that. Um, keep watching. Stay tuned. I'm going to do larger loads here. I've got able to do all the way up to 4,200. Have a good time, guys.